days before President Trump officially completes his first year as president, he is now on track to exceed 2,000 false or misleading claims, either spoken or through Twitter. That's according to a new report by The Washington Post. The Post created an interactive graphic that breaks down these claims by topic. The Post says most of these false claims were made about the Affordable Care Act, as well as the president taking credit for events or business decisions that took place before he took office or was elected. President was very busy on Twitter this morning. Starting at 7 a.m., he sent out a series of tweets covering everything from Iran, the tax bill, North Korea, and finally, DACA, that is Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. He used that final tweet to directly target Democrats. He tweeted, quote, Democrats are doing nothing for DACA, just interested in politics. DACA activists and Hispanics will go hard against the Dems. We'll start falling in love with Republicans and their president. We are about results. Joining me now is Stephen Cruz. He's a senior strategist at Red Edge. That's a digital advocacy group here in D.C. Uh, and let's talk about the president's tweet, Stephen. So first, do you, do you agree with it? Are, are Democrats going to be falling in love with the president by the end of 2018? You know, it's a long-held contention that Democrats haven't done anything for Hispanics and that they've not advanced immigration reform. However, it's a really, really hard jump to make that Hispanics are going to be falling in love with their president, with Republicans, when the past uh, two years have just shown us a successive uh, rhetor rhetoric uh, on the president's feelings on immigrants. He ran on a platform of deporting immigrants. He attacked a Mexican-American judge, and he continues to uh, show, much like any other politician in recent history, that they only care about Hispanics when it serves their political interests. So the president on DACA. He's not taking executive action here, which is to say he's not proposing anything. He has said the program's going to end. Congress, here's six months, figure it out. Is, is that a smart play for him to make politically? Uh, you know, I think so, because it now really puts the, the onus on Congress to do their job and provide a permanent legislative solution. Um, the president is right in that DACA, from its very beginning, has not been a sufficient uh, policy alternative. It was uh, a you know, mandate from the president to give uh, people some relief. And while well-intentioned, it just kind of maintained the status quo. Um, and dreamers, which are the ones who are benefiting from DACA, uh, they need to be able to live fully productive and involved lives. And this kind of uncertainty um, is just not, not the humane thing to do. So the president is right to put this on Congress because this is what they were elected to do. So the president wants Congress, in a bipartisan way, to come up with something and bring it to him to sign. Are there points of agreement and points of contention between Democrats and Republicans on DACA? You know, I think a lot of Democrats and Republicans uh, will agree on, on lifting the visa caps for high-skilled workers and even some of the visa caps for low-skilled workers. We, we need an infusion um, of brain power and manpower in this country. However, you're going to see uh, the wall being a huge sticking point where the president refuses to budge and the Democrats are rightly not going to accede to that well, demand. Let me stop you there real quick. Will these two be tied together? Uh, as of right now, it looks like without the wall, there will not be any movement on DACA per the president's mm. uh, insinuations. Okay. Uh, what that looks like over the next month and a half through the negotiations, I know that uh, tomorrow uh, leaders from both parties are going to be going to the White House to start those negotiations and those conversations. We don't know yet. This is a fight for the hearts and minds of the Latino voters in this country, which of course will be huge when we come up and vote in these 2018 midterms. The Republicans have the opportunity to own this issue. What can they do to get Democrats to come along? You know, the Republicans must own this issue because of states like Florida, where the president won by 120,000 votes, and the new arrival uh, from Puerto Rico, that, that expected voting block is going to be much larger than that 120,000 votes. So if the president doesn't uh, do what his the last part of his tweet said, which is provide results on immigration, which is one of the top issues for the Latino community, they're going to once again lose the mantle of the big tent party, lose the opportunity to bring in a new generation of voters um, into the fold. And, and unfortunately, we won't get to see immigration reform uh, happen if it doesn't happen now. Because this issue has now been placed in the hands of Congress, it is Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell who will drive this train. Where do they stand? And are you confident that they can come together, craft a piece of legislation that'll work for everyone and, and get Democrats on board? 
I think Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell's ability to craft legislation is, is on question. They are going to do their best, in my opinion, to really deliver a piece of legislation that addresses the fundamental needs of the Latino community, of the American people as a broader uh, subset and of, of the government. Uh, the sticking point here is always going to be the uh, hyper-partisan wings of both parties are Democrats who always stop immigration from moving forward when they don't feel it goes as far as they would like it to go, going to come to the table in good faith, and are the hardline Republicans who only want um, an ethnocentric nationalist policy also going to come to the table and negotiate. So on that last thing for you here, look into your crystal ball. And just like on the tax bill, where we had these senators, we didn't know which way they were going to go, like, like a Bob Corker. When it comes to DACA, when it comes to an immigration package, what senators do you see, and, and perhaps members of the House, that are sitting on the fence that could tilt this thing one way or another in the Republican Party? Huh, interesting. Are these I, people like Jeff Flake, John McCain, I, Ted well, I mean, Cruz? So Jeff Flake, John McCain, Corker, uh, Marco Rubio, Lindsey Graham, these are people that have been, uh, for the most part, long-term supporters um, of the of immigration reform with the Gang of Aid bill yeah. uh, a few years back. Um, as of right now, I don't think that there is any any one member that stands out to me as it's they're to going to be the linchpin. Without a piece of legislation uh, let's on the floor. Let's talk about it in two weeks, yeah. because I think that once there's a piece of legislation introduced, you are going to see um, a lot of people really critically assess the impact of this, not only from an electoral perspective, but also from a policymaking perspective. Um, and keep an eye out in Florida, because the Florida delegation statewide is going to have to be to be looking at this issue very, very critically, because it will impact their midterm elections. Yeah, and the governor's race there in Absolutely. Florida as well, with Rick Scott on the way out. Listen, Stephen Cruz, senior strategist with the uh, Red Edge, we appreciate you coming on. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Let us know what you think about that discussion. Tweet me right now using the hashtag OffScriptOn9.